So we've now got Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 Episode 13. This episode is called The Raft. And if you haven't seen this episode yet and you don't want to get spoiled for you, do not listen to this review because this review is going to contain full spoilers for the episode. And I do warn you to watch the episode before because a lot does happen in this episode. So I was away all week, that's why my review is late as well as I didn't actually get to watch the episode until I think Thursday night. I heard all throughout the week, I actually was lucky enough not to get any spoilers, but I heard throughout the week people were saying, oh my god, this episode's amazing, I can't believe they done what they did, and they went on not overhyping it really. So I was going in with high expectations where I thought Strand was going to die in this episode, he didn't appear. I thought Alicia was going to die in this episode, of course she didn't, but I just saw something massive. I thought we were going to get some massive character death. I wasn't expecting Madison to show up, because I felt like if Madison showed up, I would have seen that in line. I felt like that would have spoiled everywhere online, so I knew that wasn't going to happen. But I did see a few Strand posts, which led me to believe that he was going to end up dying, but then, of course, he never showed up in the episode. But this episode was, for the most part, it was a Dwight and Sherry episode, and... Dwight and Sherry are characters that, of course, they're OG Walking Dead. Well, they're from the OG show, but they're season 6, season 7 characters of the original show. And they're fine. Dwight, I like. I like Dwight. Sherry, I just, I've never really had an attachment to her character. It could have been in the original Walking Dead. She was very much kind of like an afterthought. They kind of had her prominent, and then she just disappeared to never appear again. Because I think the actress went off to do other things. But... When the characters do that, it's just very irritating. Like with Heat, even Rick Grimes has done that. And it's annoying because they just disappear and you never hear from them again. Madison is another one that has to happen to. And it's just you want to hear from these characters again because you really like them. So when Sherry reappeared in Season 6, it was great. And seeing their relationship, especially in Season 6, go from where she didn't want to be with him. But then he didn't want to be with her. And it was just going between all this. And now seeing them together. They do work well together, but it always feels... It just feels odd. It feels like, mostly from Sherry's point of view, it feels like she's putting on kind of an image for him, for them to be together. And in this episode, she does kind of confirm that she's been doing that because she has been. She doesn't think they're going to be safe out in the world. She thinks they should go with Strand, but she doesn't want Dwight to go with Strand because she thinks if Dwight goes with Strand, she's going to become the same guy he was with Negan. So that's where the episode title, The Raft, comes from, where Sherry was actually creating a raft, a float, to get out of that area because she found out that it's not completely radiated the whole world pretty much but that kind of lends to the idea that why are they not leaving texas well they're not leaving texas because they think the radiation doesn't stop which of course is kind of a stupid idea they know it didn't go far because they stopped most of the nuclear heads so they know if they just leave texas like it was kind of said in season six Outside of Texas is safe, so I don't fully know why they don't leave, because they do know outside of Texas is safe. But anyways, they do come across a woman at the start. The woman was trying to get the Strands Tower, so Dwight just shows her how to get to the tower, because Dwight just believes that there's no point in us fighting. He's got he's got everything. He's winning in this. With no point in us fighting him, and he was even saying we might as well join him. Cherry's all against this, but we do then jump over to Morgan, who it's actually revealed that in last week's episode when John Dory Sr. let himself be eaten by all those walkers really much sacrificing himself after he got bit that was kind of useless because some of the walkers started to follow him and then Morgan just let them follow him so nearly John Dory should have just helped Morgan get those walkers with him instead of just sacrificing himself really makes it really makes John Dory sacrifice like a slap in the face. It's really disappointing because I, I've been watching Dexter and to see his character in those seasons of Dexter and then see him in this. He he plays a very, very similar character in Boat and it's disappointing to see what they ended up putting him out like in Fear the Walking Dead. I feel like the character deserved better. But anyways, Morgan is then walking with baby Mo as he's bringing the walkers just far away he doesn't know exactly where to go he runs into Dwight and Sherry who then take baby Mo away from him and says if you just bring them to this kind of I think it was a gorge they call it I don't know exactly but they call it that and they say just put the walkers in there there's already a shit ton of walkers in there what's adding a few more going to do so he's, his plan is to bring them to that gorge because he knows that if he, the Strand uses them as protection if they're gone he can't use them as protection anymore and that's their window to then go in there and pretty much take over take down strand 
as he's going there, of course, he runs into Alicia, which is the first time we've seen Alicia in at least two, maybe three episodes. I actually... Could it be the first time we see Alicia since episode nine? I actually don't know. But, um... She sets off a bomb, first off, trying to save Morgan from these. Of course, that's the initial reaction to see that and say, Oh, crap. This guy needs my help here. But then it's revealed. No. She, Morgan explains the plan. They end up making their way to the gorge to find out that someone had let the walkers out. So there's a bridge for them to get out. So there's no point in even throwing them in there. Because they're just going to walk straight out there. It's not revealed or it's not stated or anything about who is the one who put them in there. I'm expecting it's Madison's group. We saw in the trailer that Madison's group seemed to be quite intense. So I'm expecting it to be them. I I wouldn't say CRM. I'm expecting no more CRM connections ever since um, uh, Altia left with whatever that woman's name is. I expect that to be the end of the CRM kind of uh, information, easter eggs, whatever you want to call them, I expect that to be the end of them, so I expect it to be a new group, and I'm assuming it's Madison's group, but who really knows. But while all that's happening, Morgan and Alicia, Strand, Baby Mo, and uh, Sherry run into Wes. Wes makes multiple attempts on their lives if they don't give over Baby Mo, but for some reason, they constantly spare his life. I get it that he used to be on their side, he used to be their friend, but this guy seems like he would literally kill them. So I don't understand why they are literally sparing his life in multiple situations when he would have killed them three times over by now. And I just, it's something weird that Fear the Walking Dead does. Even, I remember in The Walking Dead season 8 when um, Morales showed up. He had a gun at Rick's head and Rick was trying to nearly bring him over to their side. And Daryl, of course, Daryl, being the badass he was, he just shot him in the head. And Morgan, Rick said, do you know who that is? And he goes, don't care, it doesn't matter, and it, that's exactly, it's the world they live in, that's what they should be thinking of, they shouldn't be trying to spare his life, even though he has tried to kill them multiple times, has brought more people in to try and kill them multiple times, I just, it's odd that they are really, really doing everything they can to try and make sure this guy lives when he is trying to kill them, it's just, it really is baffling, but uh, Morgan got a message from Grace on that walkie, or not the walkie, the um, little tape recorder saying, get baby mo out of here if it's dangerous just the two of you just leave leave me behind and go ahead and morgan does it i'm surprised morgan actually leaves in the end of the episode morgan ends up leaving nothing else really happens with his character in this episode besides the point that he says in the episode that he doesn't want to leave everyone in the middle of this because he's done that once before people he cared about of course talking about rick then he says he regrets leaving rick rhymes but well, he doesn't say Rick by name, but he says he regrets leaving that group. But we know it's he regrets leaving Carol, Ezekiel, Rick, all these people he actually had relationships with. He regrets doing that. And he says he doesn't want to do it again. End of the episode, he does it again anyways. But what seeing Morgan leave, I feel like, yeah, they're just making Morgan leave. Are we going to see Morgan in 14, 15, 16? Or are they just making him leave for Madison to come in? And then in season 8, we'll see them the two of them together because... They're not going to kill Morgan off. They're bringing Madison in. So they're not going to kill Madison off. And they're not going to have two completely separate storylines in season 8. And I'm assuming Morgan isn't. That's not the last we're going to see in Morgan. I'd be shocked if that's the last we see in Morgan. So maybe that's the end of him until episode 16. I would be surprised if we immediately picked up with him in episode 14. Especially with how this episode lets off. But who knows. Uh, Dwight and Sherry end up finding the hotel Teddy kept Alicia in. They end up going down there. We get the reveal that Sherry has taught she was pregnant. So she took a pregnancy test. It's revealed and she is pregnant. So there will be a baby on the show. I'm assuming probably between 7 and 8. We will get a time skip and we will see the baby. Or maybe it will be a big time skip bringing us up to the end of The Walking Dead. And she will have a child. But who knows? I imagine if she ever goes... If her and Dwight go back to Alexandria with a child... Daryl's just going to be like, you know what, man, I don't care. You can, you're welcome to join us. So I wonder what's going to happen there. Of course, we know they're going to have the baby. They've been kind of talking about it this entire season that they want to have a family. They want to be able to grow in the apocalypse. So he was very excited. She was a bit nervous about it. But yeah, they're having a child, but they're in the hotel. They find out that, oh, well, they find Alicia's weapon. They have Alicia's weapon now. Their plan then is to get all the walkers in there because the creators full. So then they try to bring all the walkers in by setting off the fire alarm while they escape out the tunnel that Alicia lost her hand in. 
as they're going through there, West and his people come in there. So all West's people in there, and then the walkers come in. And you see everyone except West die. They all get bitten, they all get ripped to shreds, except for Wes. Wes is still alive in the building. I would be surprised if Wes survives this, because the only way out is the way Sherry and Dwight got out, but we see them in the tunnel, and then it, everything collapses on the right and the left-hand side of them, so then he'd have to break through everything, and I just... I honestly... I've never really cared for Wes. He's been there since season 5, and I was calling him West a few episodes ago, and apparently his name is Wes. I honestly don't care if they kill off his character so just kill him off have him die in the situation and like honestly he's gone over to strand side he tried to kill dwight and sherry multiple times in the episode i don't care i don't care i don't understand why they're trying to spare his life so much so kill him off i don't really care but then uh sherry as they're trapped in this area she wants to keep going so she immediately starts digging out the entire tunnel where uh with alicia's weapon they do get out Baby Mo gets reunited with Morgan and Alicia. We find out that the reason Alicia actually left wasn't because she went off looking for something or anything. She, but she went off to find the the radio that I think she got from the hotel, if I'm not wrong. But the one the reason she left is because she doesn't want to fight Strand. Because she, if she fights Strand, she feels like she's going to kill Strand. And she doesn't want to have to kill Strand. So, odd. But we're going to war. Episode 14, by the looks of it, looks quite big quite intense i don't think either of them will die in episode 14 i imagine i'll be 15 i i can't see this season ending with strand alive unless they do something like with negan where they put him in a prison but they don't have a set location so it doesn't make sense for them to put him in a prison because they don't they'd be walking around with him in handcuffs and it just i think strand is going to die this season which is really disappointing strand has been one of my favorite characters since season one so but I can't see it going any other way. Strand will have to die because they literally, like, they tried it last season with, I can't remember the character's name, but the woman who was in charge of Virginia, I think her character, her name was, they tried to kill her off, or they tried to put her in a prison and then she died. But at the point it made sense because they had a set community, but now they don't. I can't see them taking over the tower. I imagine they're going to leave Texas after the season because it literally makes no sense to stay in Texas. I get it from a point of view why they're staying in Texas at the moment because they're not all reunited yet. But once they're reunited, what's the point in staying in Texas? So they might as well leave Texas. So I imagine Strand's going to die. I'd be very disappointed if they ended up killing off Alicia just to bring Madison back. I'd like to see them two together for a while, but... It's kind of looking like they're going to kill off Alicia, which is very disappointing. So maybe Alicia and Strand end up killing each other in the process of this war. And then I imagine Morgan is actually going to be the one to find Madison. He's going to know it's her because she's going to be saying, I'm looking for my kids. He'll see the tattoos on her wrist that we saw in the trailer. And I'll be taken from there. But episode 13, it was the best episode of this back half so far. It's not really saying much because I haven't really liked the back half so far. But honestly... I did have fun with it. I'm glad I actually did get to watch it without any spoilers because I would have been disappointed to find out that Morgan just left with no context. But again, I don't think he's going to show up in 14, maybe 15, 16. But I don't think that's the end of him for The Walking Dead universe. I don't think that's the end of him for The Walking Dead, or Fear The Walking Dead season 7. But I don't think we're going to see him straight away. But who knows? I'm excited to watch episode 14. Hopefully I'll get to watch it today, if not tomorrow. But if you have any of my thoughts on episode 14, 15 and 16... Make sure you click the subscribe button. As far as I know, after Fear the Walking Dead Season 7, we're getting Tales for the Walking Dead, which is a show I am excited for. So if you want to hear my thoughts on anything Walking Dead related in the future, click the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.